How can I escape the cycle of birth and death? Guru Nanak Dev Ji tells us that that one is Ajuni. Let's break that word down. It comes from the word Jun. Jun means something that is born. So it can literally be translated to birth. So now when we add the ara to it, again, it negates the word, making it a juni, meaning that one that is beyond birth. But to that we can add death as well. So we can say that one is beyond birth and death. Juni can also be translated to life forms. That one has created multiple, countless life forms but that one is beyond all of those life forms just like we learn within the Mool Mantra that one is Akal Purk Purk meaning the one that is embedded into everything even though that one is embedded into everything that is born and that dies but that one is beyond that cycle of birth and death Another common question that comes from this. So, when did that one actually start? When did Vaiguru actually come about? When did Vaiguru begin? Again, Guru Nanak Dev Ji tells us that Ad, Anil, Anad, Anahat. So, when we look at the word Anad, it comes from the word Ad. Ad means beginning. But Guru Nanak Dev Ji is making very clear to us that one is anad so that again when we add the unto it it's referring to that one has no beginning that can be very difficult for us to get around our head because the way we look at life that everything began at some point there was a starting point somebody was born at a certain point whatever it is whether it's a tree somebody will tell us oh that tree is 200 years old that tree is 50 years old. We all know that everything has a beginning. So when it comes to that one, that crater, Vaheguru, when that question comes forward, all right, so then at which point, when did Vaheguru just appear? Guru Nanak Dev Ji said, Anad, that one has no beginning. That one didn't just appear at some point. That one has always been. It can be very difficult to try and get that around our head. And that's why this Mool Mantar is what takes us back to our origin. Repeat that throughout all the videos because this is to help us to contemplate. The literal translations can be shared. Everyone will have a slightly different interpretation and the way they receive it. But the truth is, this should be taking us to a place of contemplation where we start to yearn and want to seek to experience what it actually is to have no beginning. What about everything else? What about the creation? The creation has a point of beginning. Even us, our body has a point of beginning. And Guru Sahib Ji tell us very clearly, Guru Arjan Dev Ji say to us that Janamang Ta Maranang Whatever is born, Janamang, wherever there is birth, Janamang Ta, then Maranang There is death also So we know whatever has come about has to come to an end as well Jo Upajyo So Binasaha Paro Ajake Kaal Jo Upajo, Upajo again means whatever is born. These are the words of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji in the slok. Jo Upajo, so binasaha. One day that will come to an end. Binas means it will be destroyed as well one day, whatever comes about. So, for us, this journey has been a long journey. It's not that our traveling mind has come into a body for the first time. This has been a long journey. And in Gurbani, Guru Sahib Ji make that clear for us. They say that Janam, janam ki is manko malalagi. There are many lines within Gurbani that will remind us this. Just looking at this one, Janam, janam ki 
इस मान को मल लागी सो वेन वी से दर्ड जन्म ट्वाइस है वे सेंग थ्रू आउ मैनी लाइफ जन्म जन्म की इस मान को दिस माइंड मल लागी हैज बीन पोल्यूटेड एंड वन वी थोक अबाउट द माइंड बिकॉज इट्स द माइंड दैट ट्रेवल्स इट्स द माइंड दैट लीव्स दिस बॉडी सो गुरु साहब जी अगेन गुरु अमरदास जी टेलिंग अस दैट मार मार जम है फेर पव है कनेरे दे सेंग दैट मार मार यू डाई not just once it's not that we've just we've died once the body's come to an end once it's happened so many times for us mar mar and then jamma hai then we're born again mar mar jamma hai fer fer here doesn't mean again fer here means when you go round and round in something fer pav hai knere knere means so many times you've been going round in circles like this for so many lifetimes Guru Arjan Dev Ji tell us that we've been through lifetimes for instance like ke janam pe keet patanga there's been many lifetimes when ke janam pe where you have been a keet a patanga a keet means an insect patanga means some form of insect that has wings ke janam pe keet patanga ke janam gaj meen karanga where you've been a gaj where you've been an elephant where you've been a meen where you've been a fish gaj meen karanga so that gives us the example that we've been so many different things already the guru tells us that ketiya ke baap that you've been fathers to many as well ketiya ke bete you've been sons to many as well kete gur chele hoye you've even taken on so many gurus and you've been a disciple of so many gurus in the past as well so we know this has been a long journey for us but if we just finish that looking at that what guru arjan dev ji was saying to us when we start off with kai janam pe keet patanga kai janam gaj meen karanga kai janam pankhi sarp hoyo pankhi means you've been birds sarp means you've been snakes kai janam pankhi sarp hoyo kai janam haver bik joyo you've been oxes where you've been carrying weight but now guru arjan dev ji says mil jagdees milan ki bariya but now it's your opportunity now it's your turn milan ki bariya jagdees the one that has made this entire creation this jug this world and the multi universes as well mil jagdees milan ki bariya chirankal eh de sanjariya Chirankal, after such a long travel and time, Chirankal, eh, day we've been given this body. Chirankal, eh, day Sanjariya, we've met with this body now. First of all, at this point, we should take this moment and congratulate each other that we've actually made it as a human being, because it was no easy task. That manas janam dulamba hai, hoy na bare bar. they saying it's such a rare opportunity to lamb for you to have this form as a human because we've done gone through so many different life forms to get here but now the question is how do we become conscious and realize our true potential of a human being and break from this cycle because let's now bring it to relevance of now even now look at our lives and this is happening more and more for people we're going in circles in our life one day in one moment we take on this birthy the state of a one side of a dog it's not a complete it's not a complete example of a dog but the guru brings forward that side of a dog when the dog is seen to be to have that that sense of greediness guru saab ji say to us that antar byape lob swan that there's this greedy dog barking inside of us there's so many times in our life that when greed takes over and how intense is greed greed completely takes us away from having any experience of that creator inside 
Bhagat Kabir Ji reminds us of that. They say that Jaha Lob Tahkalaha, that where there is greed, there is death. Because where do you go from that point? So when we get caught up in this greed, Lob, greed is when you think that by getting more, when you think by getting more, you're going to be satisfied. When you think I'll get this other thing, then I'll feel better, I'll feel more complete. We all know that's an illusion, that that doesn't actually happen. That is we're living in that moment, the life of a dog, even though we're in a human body. Guru Sahib Ji say to us that Kartut Pasuki, Manas Jat, that even though you're a human being, but your Kartut, your ways have become of a dog. So in that moment, you've just taken that Junni, that form, that life form as a dog in that moment. We're going in this constant cycle of jumping from one life form to another, from one life form to another. So now we've just, we're born as a dog still in this human body. And then we think, you know, I'm going to break out of this, I'm going to break out of this. But life has become such that for that one moment, you try and become, yeah, I'm not going to be greedy anymore. I'm not going to think that that's going to quench that thirst, that thirst that I've got inside of wanting to become complete, of meeting, of, of realizing Vaheguru. That mil jagadis milanaki bariya. But then moments, sometimes nowadays, it's becoming so small when it's coming back round. Before it would be, it would last maybe about a month where we'd stop out of that compulsion of constantly buying things and thinking it's going to quench that thirst. But then nowadays it's becoming so small, that circle, that literally the next day we're back there, even though we've told our mind. Oh, nowadays it's we're back there in the evening. We're going round and round in this junior, in this, in this cycle of life and death. The dog, this one moment is born, that's gone. And then we take on the form of another life form, could be of a pig, where we are just constantly in this mode of thinking that my family is going to quench that thirst, that this is going to quench that thirst. So we're in this Janam Maram the Kid, in this play of birth and death constantly. But now here's the thing. The time of death comes, that Maranam, that last moment is coming for us. And remember, only that what is engraved in us that has become our Simran, our true inner remembrance. So if our true remembrance, if our state now, Birti inside, has become more dog-like, and now our end time comes. So now what happens? So the Guru tells us that Ant Kaljo Mandar Simre. Now the Ant, the end time has come. And now my Simre. And we think, how many times do we say to each other, but it's okay, even though I'm not living in this way now, I will later. And we say, but I'll be all right. When that time of death comes, I'll just remember why Guru. I'll just remember that one and I'll be all right and I'll be liberated not realizing that it takes training it takes to do something again and again kar kar karna lik la jo we have to do it again and again that's what it means to constantly baran bar bar prab japie pi amrit eho man tan trapie baran bar again and again we have to engrave something within ourselves but if we've engraved that state of a dog inside of us, then it is said, when the time of death comes, that's what's easy for us. That's what will just come forth. That's what will be oozing out of us. And that could be what's oozing out of us are those attachments, attachments for family, attachment for what's around us. That will be our inner Simran. That's then what will determine for us to continue this cycle of birth and death, even when we leave this body. So now the body is gone, the, we've dropped the body, what we refer to as death. But then that mind is there, still filled with desires, still filled with wants and wanting more. That now will continue its journey, but that in itself now, it's like, imagine it's like this fragrance that is traveling. This fragrance now is traveling 
and now that's what will determine and it will find its direction and journey which is a makeup of your karam what you had been doing again and again kar kar karana it had become now your karana your karam so now that's what will find its next life form it could be just lingering there for some time without a body and then it will find a next body but it will be your karam like a fragrance that will travel towards a certain direction that at that point where we'll have no intellect to decide to turn left or right it will be determined by our karam which body then we take on next and that chakkar that fear pavah kanere that cycle just continues again and again going round and round so how do we start to break away from that for one it's when we stop when we come to that realization that doesn't matter how much i accumulate more from outside that is not going to it's not going to satisfy me so i stop identifying and i become conscious of we start asking that question what am i who am i and until i'm continuously identifying with the body then the body is going to come to an end it's going to die i keep thinking this body needs this this body needs that and we keep going round and round but when we start to go deeper inside and we start to become conscious and then not being stuck in that ego and going beyond that ego and the guru has given us then the path of naam and when we start to say vahi guru we start to come away from that i am from that ego from those multiple identities that we have created and we start to say it is you and then we start to create that distance from what we had been identifying with the body and the mind trying to feed that and going round in circles where now we start to become conscious by taking the guru's mantra and meditating on god's name and then coming away from our compulsions and the wants and the desires and the greed which will keep us in that cycle now we start doing everything consciously and start breaking out of that cycle continue listening to the mool mantra because next is coming sa pang and that will give us even more of what we need to break from this cycle wahiguru ji ka khalsa wahiguru ji ki fateh